I mean, for nothing ever. What was the what was the connection with uh, what was the connection with the Salvation Army? How did you get so involved in the Salvation well, they, Army? They came in a truck, picking up the kids for Sunday school, and Mama being a, a, a Baptist and a Protestant, they asked my mom if we could go to me and TF and me and Bobby. So she said yes, if they could go. So they, and we got in the truck and we fell in love with the church. My sister became an officer, so and that's how we stayed. With. They still come to see me, Bill. They bring the home legal. Well, and TF was better known to a lot of people as Tom. And Tom played the trumpet in Salvation Army Band up until almost the day he died. Well, I'll tell you something. They did a lot for people. They did a lot for people that really need, they still do. I, I worked in the office for five years. That was on the office for, and I'll tell you something. They really helped people. There's no doubt about it. Jerry. But, what is your recollection of the Alsal area? I remember Grandpa used to walk up and down Alsal Street a lot. Well, Papa he, walking yeah, down. he seemed to know everybody. Oh yeah, well he'd go uptown and set up on the main street there. Everybody knew each other here. You know, they go down Main Street, sit down there on Main Street. And I worked at Walsworth on Main Street when I was in high school. And I see them both people sitting there. And I said, I never want to do that. <laughs> Well, I remember Papa up until the day he became bedridden. I'd walk with him, you know, because because we all lived here together. And Grandpa he, was he, known as the mayor of house. Yeah, he was. I'd still walk with him. I called him Papa, but I remember we used to walk all. We'd walk up, still walk up Dallas South Street, and Papa would take me walks up and down the street, and everybody would greet us, and everybody would say hello to him. And uh, Isn't it amazing, he wore that hat. Yeah, he was not as big as a minute. And yeah. he never wore. He never. Always wore a tie. Without a tie. Yeah. He always had a tie. My, and, and I, my dad always used to say, if you're nice to them, they're nice to you. What was his name? Thomas. His name? Thomas. Franklin Ramsey. Ramsey. Yeah. And, um, but he, he knew everybody and everybody knew him. Jerry, the Ramseys were, were pretty popular here. Well, there were so many of us. We were going to be well known. One well, way or the other, because there were a whole bunch. There were a whole Bill, bunch of us. Bill, if you remember, Frankie and Virgil had a store on Del Monte. Yeah, talk and about Bill that and just Andrew a little bit. had a store over there on Market Street. Mm -hmm. Then B. Carroll had one over there, the store. Mm -hmm. We were pretty well popular here. The girls all got the stores and everything mm -hmm. else here. And what? his dad was. Uh, they all liked his dad too. Yeah. We had a real good dad. We had uh, three family members who were in the retail business. Huh? The Banning family, the Ratton family, and the Hogan family. Uh -huh. Yeah. They all had, uh, what, would you call, what would you call them, not department stores, but... Well, in those days, they, that's what you would have been a department yeah. store. They, the variety store variety is what store they called them in those better, days. Because yeah. the Hogan's had the big store over here on uh, Market Street. And they were big. Yeah, that was actually a very big but, store. Uh, you know, Market Street did Hogan. Yeah. But, it's not a furniture store, I believe. It's a furniture store yeah. now. But we were pretty popular here, you know. Everybody, and my, when my dad come out here, it, it, the kids start following him out here. He, he, but son, and they, were, they all come from Texas out here. And, and then they start establishing stores and everything. Jerry, when you, were, when you were here and you started going to grammar school, yeah. what school did you go to? The first school, uh, when we lived on Lunch Bazaar, I went to Roosevelt. Okay. Then, then we moved to Spring Street, I went to Lincoln School. I hated that school. <laughs> then we moved out here to Sherwood School, opened up. I moved to Sherwood. Then I went to Washington, then I graduated from Celine's High, 43. And that's, that's the way. Then I went to Alameda. See, I think it's interesting you speak of Lumsford Avenue. Huh? And I talk about Lumsford Camp, certainly the, 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 the correlation. Street. Whatever it was, yeah. it, that's where the tents were. So one of the things I'd like to know, uh, I remember, um, uh, did you grow up here? I grew up in Watsonville, uh, but my father worked in Salinas for years. Uh, and I re remember people talking about in the 1930s, people coming from the Dust Bowl were living, the, there were areas where there were shacks, almost like Steinbeck described in the Grapes of Wrath, the Hoovervilles. Mm -hmm. Was there something like that actually? Oh, I, we came like the Grapes of Wrath. <laughs> we were talking about where you lived. Like, were there little shacks that people lived in when they first came out here? The tents. Yeah, you know, the tents like they 
and good old right to come up in a circle or something. They had tents. The first ones with the tents with the dirt floor. Then you get a little bit more money, you move up to the wood floor. And those were tents that were provided by the government or the Salvation Army for people yeah, for a Salvation short period? Yeah, the Salvation Army came around to bring them to Sunday school. But how did you... But who, who provided the tents, Mom? Mr. Sherwood. Mr. Sherwood did. And how long were people allowed to stay in those tents? Well, you stayed there till you got on your feet and popped in like it there because my dad was very proud. And he, and he, we went to Lunchford Drive. Pop saved up his money and moved us to Lunchford. Then we moved to Spring Street. Pop says, we're going to take you out of here. I remember that. He was telling us, you're going to take us out of here. He wanted us kids to have something better. And we did. When the other part of the Ramsey family came, and we uh, were two months coming out here from Texas, well, my sister Mary, you? your, 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 your was cousin you Mary, born out here? pardon me? Was you born in Kisali? I was born here, but, but, I, but Mary wrote the story about the tent. And if you remember the story, they were, they were camped out in Arizona in a tent. And there had been a breakout in a prison, however close they were to the prison. So the officers of the day came by and told Mary and all the kids and my mother to stay in the tent because they had this trouble. And Mary goes on to write, I wonder what protection we would have had from that tent because it was, it was, <laughs> you weren't protected from anything. So I would imagine that those of us, my family too, when we lived in a tent, it was only until you could get on your feet and find a house. Mm -hmm. Jerry, you, you talked to me quite a bit about your, your teenage years and your pre-teenage years out here, just just doing whatever you did. Yes. And, and now South Street. Years, yeah. your, your teen years and your pre-teen, when you were a kid from you know, 12 on. Well, I, I just, I just spend your time. We lived here thirty-six, and I was in sixth grade in that Lincoln school, and then we moved over here. Mm -hmm. And I, our first sixth grade was Sherwood School. Well, I have to throw, I throw in there because she said about a Lincoln School. Yeah. I was at Lincoln School when it closed the first time, which was about six years ago, and they were going through all the registers, and I found my mom in the register at Lincoln School. And where they had her address listed as, it was uh, Spring Street, it said Little Oklahoma. That was how, where they put the area right after it. So they actually yeah, mentioned it, is it, it mentioned as Little Oklahoma. So that was how they were, they were all, and you go down the register and the number of kids that said, that said Little Oklahoma after, astounding, it's just, there was quite a few. Is Spring oh, Street yeah, the yeah, everybody knew everybody. Yes, it's right off of, of um, what's over the railroad tracks? John, Alec, John, John Street. Right over here past. Bruce, if you were trying to find an identifying area to memorialize to the Oklahoma, the Grapes of Wrath, the Okies. Oh, John Stein made me fun of us. Where, where, would, you, where would you identify? You, you, when you were a kid out here, mm -hmm. Al Sal was still full of a whole bunch of Okies. Yes, it was. It was. It was. It was just starting to be a mix. I think we. When, I, I. I'm. I'm at Sherwood School, and that's kind of. I've gone full circle. I went to school at Sherwood School, and now I'm finishing up my career at Sherwood School. But the picture I found for me in fifth grade was this great mixture of of kids who were the next generation of the Okies who came out here and the first part of the Hispanic wave that first came out here. I remember showing people I worked, I go, look, this is me, and they go, my goodness, where are all those blonde, blue-eyed kids come from in the picture, you know, because now you wouldn't see that at Sherwood School. What year would that have been? Uh, I was in fifth, fifth, one we found was for me in 1959, and I was he in fourth grade. He kindergarten up to sixth grade, and then he went counseling over there. Yeah, so I've kind of gone full circle. Mm -hmm. with it. Well, and, and when you speak of, of the time frame that you remember, mm -hmm. I grew up a little further out, and I left home in, in 1950. And my dad lived there until about 1953 or 1954 or so. We were still prominently Okies out here. Right. The Hispanic movement was beginning. Mm -hmm. Just know. starting. But, uh, heck, I remember out of Midway Avenue, my dad living there through almost all of my years in the Korean War, uh, during the Korean War. 
so we were still a bunch of blue-eyed blondes or whatever we were out here. Yeah, we? it yeah. was it, it was amazing to see to go through the the book that we found hidden away in in one of the back rooms and all the, the how, how we could watch the the population change from I mean, even when I was there as to where it is now. So if we're looking at the period of the 1930s, that period that mm -hmm. Steinbeck writes about in The Grapes of Wrath, and so we picture ourselves here, if we tried to find maybe two or three places that were the most significant places in the Alice South during that period, that might be a productive way to go about finding a place to put a marker. Maybe there was a, a community room where everybody hung out. Maybe it was the Salvation Army. I mean, because they did so much work for people. You know, this was where... Maybe this. Uh, wh where did you guys hang out? Where were the important places in the LSL then? Well, like I say, the local home lunch pad for the teenagers. I but we played on the streets here. And then over the corner, this man made a baseball plot before they built the house. He made a diamond box for us to play baseball on the corner of uh, Felice and. Uh, but we we were really happy. We weren't really poor. Uh, we were poor, but we were happy kids. We were real happy. Kids. So the baseball diamond was the corner of Felice. Right at the Felice corner. Felice Market. Right right market. Right. Yeah. yeah, and uh, they made way for us kids, you know. And, and that's why I feel so sorry for this generation now. Well, Mom, when you first got out here on this street, there was just you and the house across the, the yeah. one of the one of the Dark little porch. Beach. Yeah, there was just you and the, there were just two houses here, right? Yeah. Yeah, well, how many other houses were there in this whole, whole three well, or four Herbert blocks? Street, Herbert Street. Did Herbert Street have yeah. houses? Oh, yeah, Herbert. Old man Herbert was a, a contractor. He went police and bought eight real houses, one right after another. And I was popping to head on holiday. The holiday, they had to, he was a good contractor, too. Was he? They, they come out here from Oklahoma, empty pockets. They went out with a full pocket, like with your <laughs> model. And they made it. But I'll tell you one thing, one thing, the people bought him, the place bought his houses. And he, and Warner bought that one on the corner. Okay. Yeah. That was not, she bought that in 1937. So it was a year after you guys built yeah, this one. Yeah, Sonny was born in 39. And uh, it, well, they, they really put up the houses. People bought them. So you were mentioning, it was called the Little Oklahoma Lunch Fountain. Is that I, what it was called? The place where you had the Little Oklahoma Lunch Fountain, is that what it was called? Yeah, the Little Oklahoma Lunch Fountain, the corner of Madeira and Alisal. Then they had the uh, duck pin bowling ball across the street. The bus kid came there. We were ran out of Pep's Creamery up in town. They wouldn't let us in there because we lived out there. The Pep Creamery was a hanging, uh, hanging out place. For, for high school kids, it really that is right stopped. across from the Fox Theater. Yeah. So was they wouldn't let you hang out. I think it's Dudley's now. Is that where Dudley's is? Yeah, we're yeah. 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 to tell them we lived out here because the city kids was was terrible with us. And, but uh, we, uh, we, then when that's when we decided to have our own hang, and Mister that guy that owned it, he was really nice with us. And he said, "You kids, as long as you don't tear it up, he said, you, you're going to sit down here." And this was the little Oklahoma yeah, lunch fountain? The local home fountain. And what year was that that the kids were hanging out there? It, that was, well, I graduated in 43. And that was, it, they first started in about 44, I think. 44. So we're looking for something back in 1936, during the Dust Bowl period here. So let's kind of go well, back that there. Started, that, was only, that was started when the high school kids. Mm -hmm. We kept playing. We couldn't hang out at Pips anymore. So that man put it up for us, and then they put a duck pin ball for us. And it, we, we had a good time. So what did you do before this, the, when you guys were out here in the, in the late 30s, Mom? From about 36 to 39, where did you guys hang out? We didn't hang out nowhere. What did you do? What did you do every day when you weren't going to we school? Had, we played baseball. Yeah. That's what we played. Mm -hmm. Baseball. That's Boys why I girls. love it today. I still like baseball. <laughs> boys and girls play baseball together? Was it both boys and girls, Mom? Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. The boys were, we were big town boys. The girls were town girls. We, 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 we hung with the boys. And did you play kick I mean, the was, can? There wasn't no romance, you'd say, was just playing. <laughs> did you have teens? Did you separate out into teens? Okay. You had teens? Did you play on teams? Oh, no, no, we just played among ourselves. And that's all. The boys the, we had their team, and the girls had to, we played among each other. 
So you know where I got my baseball skills from, huh? There was, there was no problem. Yeah. It's played just about every day. I'm going to tell you, those days the parents were strict. If I got in trouble at school, well, I got it at home. That's the way it was. And we knew if we, if we got the, and our parents said what they said. And I got the plenty of times I got the belt. <laughs> but we do better to, to bridge. But nowadays the kids do it than they want to. They got counselors. <laughs> Thank goodness for that, don't they? <laughs> and where uh, you, you're trying to get the 1936, are you I'm trying to get into that era? Yeah, we're trying to get 36 to 39 yeah. here. Right. Where did the adults hang out? What else? I like the baseball. That that could be an interesting. Yeah. Place. yeah. What else? Well, uh, the kids didn't hang out. Like but what about did. where did the adults hang, Mom? Where did like Grandpa and uh, where did uptown, they? Uptown, uptown on Main Street. So the, the, nothing around here? No, no. They walked uptown. And then they go to Front Street Park. They had the Front Street Park. Well, we all stopped at the Front Street Park. Everybody did. Yep, remember There was that? a bathroom there. There was a merry-go-round. There was nothing. 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 There where was the, where did you play baseball? Right at the Just corner, do. At the Police corner. and Market, yeah. she said, yeah. So you played and marbles and what else? Marbles did you play? I think I remember marbles, you saying kick, kick the can. can, right? Kick the can. Kick the can. Yep. I couldn't describe to you how to play that game anymore, but that's what we played. <laughs> And we just, we just, I don't know, we just played, that was it. I think you have to create an environment that's different from what you think. This area was spread out. There wasn't a focal point. There wasn't, uh, Alsal didn't have a main street like Salinas has a main street. And it wasn't until quite a bit later that they built the uh, Alsal uh, uh, Theater. Right. Somewhere in the 40s, Bruce. Yeah, I remember going to the Alsal Theater yeah, as a kid. All, yes, I remember indeed. going to the last movie, theater, movie they showed yeah. there. Uh, That's where the Alsal Swap Meet is now. Ah. On Alisal Street, it used to be the Alisal Theater. Yeah, so there wasn't there wasn't a focal point in the Alisal. It was spread out. You know, people were just. You there ask no you fence, you mentioned no something fence, about no people way. hanging out. You remember I mentioned the Five Twenty Six Club. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about Whiskey Hill, uh -huh. and I right. told the girls I said, yeah, you have to understand the time frame. These guys were those of those who like to fight and drink, uh, and they were tough. And they worked their tails off in these lettuce sheds. Uh -huh. There was no fences. There was no fences. We have Jefferson Street next to the road. We, we, we have races, race each other all the time. Well, if you've ever seen any pictures from that era, 36 on, if you've got any kind of aerial photos or anything of that type, you'll notice there are big gaps. There's, there's a lot of huge, a lot of fields, a lot of spaces. The houses were further apart, you know, not the, uh, the density that you have now because there weren't could we roll this out here right now yeah what i gave them was a map and it's interesting joe you were talking about we the names that are on this map what we have here this is a map of Queens in 1935. yeah okay and when you begin to look at it it takes you a while to get organized once you begin to look at it, you find okay. Here's Market Street, and then and then it just stops. Right. Because because oh, it, yeah. it, it didn't get out here. Because this was all just fields and leafy spaces. <laughs> this is this is well, let's intimidate. This is more uh, north north main side. So let, let, let us get organized. Yeah. Where are we now? Just let us get organized. All right. This is Market see. Street. This is the railroad track. Okay, so. so you're getting closer. Here's Front Street here. So what you're basically, you're looking at Alisal, is this area over here. Here's Merced Street and Griffin Street and Neal Street. And Alisal Street with the Alisal Road in those days. But, uh... Well, you know, this is, the, this is the railroad track. This is this is basically was the divider. This was basically, this area here was where the railroad, this was the divider between what was Little Oklahoma and, and uptown. The other side of the tracks. Other side of the tracks, right. Mm -hmm. This is basically where, you know, if, if you lived on the other side of the railroad tracks, where the underpass 
goes now under Alice that was strictly a railroad yeah, track. There was no underpass. But we lived on Spring Street. We had the railroad tracks right behind us. Yeah, yeah. And that was really the divider. Mama used to feed the, uh, the bombs. They, they called them hobos. Mama used to feed them. They, they had the train, mm -hmm. and our house was shaped with the train when we lived on Spring Street. Yeah, I love that over there. Me and my buddy cried because we had to move out here. We liked it there, but I didn't like it in school. Why did you like Spring Street? I liked it because it had everything there. You know, had the good trees and everything. Tracks and everything. We could walk right over to the neighbors. We liked it, but I didn't like Lincoln School. Why not? They had Mrs. McGregor. She was Oh, I've heard of her. Laura McGregor. Oh. Yeah, where she was. I've heard no, of Mrs. her. Mrs. Linhart was another one. Sixth grade. I was glad. But Mrs. Lewis was my teacher over at Sherwood. She was one of the sweetest teachers. Sure we she was planted flowers and everything there. Yeah. I didn't learn very much here. Bruce, I don't remember whether I you remember school. what I would say Grandpa used to Except talk about. I love Washington School. Well, we're talking about Little Oklahoma and, 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 and the shanty towns. Uh -huh. My well, just a minute. Let's, we won't be able to record this if we oh, have two sorry. conversations sorry. going on. But whichever two you want to go ahead. Uh, well, go ahead, right, Bill. I remember Market Street, and I remember the shacks mm -hmm. on Market Street, and it's just about, well, you you know when it starts to come up the hill ever so slightly. Do you, That was long before your time, so you wouldn't have any sense for that area. But a lot of those were still left when I was a kid. Because some of my friends lived in some of that area. Those we used to refer to them as courts, because they not only did they front the street, but they also went back in, into the back where there was a little small, usually one, the best one bedroom, shacks or shanties or, or courthouses as we referred to them. Like there was one right here on on East Street, just where these this three-story apartment is. That used to be a court also. Mm -hmm. if they had Campbell's Court. Camel's Court, that's what it was called. They had, Camel's owned They it. had a court, you know, there too. And I don't know why they tore it down. It was like cabins. There were cabins. Oh. And this just woman had from Oklahoma. And, and these people come from Oklahoma. They had cabs. They lived in these cabins. And she tried to rent. And then she had a great big house. Mrs. Campbell did. Well, the reason why they tore it down is because somebody from Monterey bought the property and, and knew he could make more money off apartments yeah. than he could and off the little... Uh, and, and Iran bought it. He wanted to buy the whole street here. But no, nobody else wanted to oh, This, it this is pretty there. amazing here. You know, Bruce, it I mean, is. I haven't seen this before. Well, it, I, had, low, it's a low it's my, I had it in my office. They only pay 500 a month. That's all I pay. It's amazing. I'm taking it the lake. You'll find the name, and there will be somewhere if you look around. Are we on this map? Uh, well, we there. It, it's not on there now. This, this is. But are we on? Uh, is the place where we are? On yes, this map? it would be. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> that was too far out. Well, here's here's Hebron Park. Okay. So be in that area. They would be right in this area, right in here. But you yeah. see, you notice what's funny is 1935. See, City of Salinas did own a parcel of land here because it's the City of Salinas, which meant that they owned that piece, but they didn't own anything else. So it would it would be roughly in this area about here where where 1936 is when they started coming in and building the houses. Yeah. So because um, you're looking at, at the area of Merced Street and some of these that are basically still around. And I see here it says uh, Cynthia, uh, Eugenia Hebron, and Nellie Sherwood own this property over here. Hebron owned a huge area here. So it's the Hebron Heights. Hebron, thus the Hebron Heights, and right? And Mr. Sanborn, Sanborn Road, he's another one. Oh, here too. Look at how much Hebron. He, Who he is Mr. Quite a Sanborn? Bunch. What? Who was Mr. Sanborn? Do you know? Who was Mr. Sanborn, Mom? What? Who was Mr. Sanborn? He was the one that built his places on Sanborn Road. And that Sanborn School, which they you know, they changed the name. That yeah. was the real, that, the, that man built a lot of places. And he was a, a nice man. Now he's from Oklahoma too. And he come out, he said he'd come out here with empty pockets from one home before. They were smart people. They were contractors in their mind, but they, they never went to school or anything how to build houses, but knew how. But they were not, they, my dad knew them all. 
My dad, you could get my dad on a seminar. Never get him off of it. Tell me something. Did was there places where people would sit around, like on the front porches, and tell stories around here? Oh yeah, that's why I built this back the porch. Oh, but they built Main Street. And we had this my from awards, you know. Well, they had benches there. These old men would sit down there on Main Street and talk about what's happening here. So in terms of the Alisal, I'm keep going back because we need to find a space on the ground in the Alisal. Yeah. And that's so inside the Alisal, I know that there's got to be a place that people congregated. Maybe it's the porch of some woman who told particularly good stories. That could be an interesting place to mark. You know where, where MacDonald is? Uh, no. Nope. MacDonald was, was a cattle ranch. Is that where people gathered, Mom? No. Wait, Mom. Not, okay, here's the thing. She's, people didn't. I know, Ma, she's looking for a spot where people out here, when they didn't go downtown, they would gather out here. There had to be some spot where, okay, we're not going downtown today, let's all meet here. Was there a, I don't know where they... Somebody, uh, somebody's house? Uh, no, they, they gathered at the church, I remember that. They had the Pentecostal church, the Baptist church on, on the... Baptist church was on Alice Island, and Pentecostal was on the... Uh, what, what's the next street over from... Um, from uh, uh, Marcus Street. Well, there's Market, then there's, uh, we mean this way with Roosevelt, or the other side where there's uh, Carr? Park, no. What's the name of that street? Well, there's well, Carr they, Street. They had the Pentecostal. Well, they used to go there to have potlucks and stuff. They, they were, you know, I don't know what they did in Oklahoma and Texas, but they, they didn't, they come out here, they were different, I guess. They just kind of different because they were so busy working all the time. Hmm. That's what they came for, us to work. The people those days weren't lazy. No. Was there a place that the Salvation Army had a, a place here in the Alisal, or did they mostly... Uh, no, they, they had the tr church uptown, the first church was uptown. And it wasn't in the Alisal? No. They had one out here, the Alisal, yeah, later in life. Remember that one? Mm -hmm. uh, 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 way back there, remember? But that was not... That's when I was a kid. That was during yeah, the 50s. Yeah, they had it out here. But she's trying to get somewhere in the 30s, early 40s. No, no they didn't have that. So where did you it, buy it, your food? It was food? uptown. It was uh, down on Market Street. They had one down on Market Street, way down there. Okay, was there any little store in the Alisal in this neighborhood where you bought your food that people hung out? Uh, where did you buy your food, Mom, when you went grocery shopping? Where did where, Papa on and buy the groceries? Mr. Cabot's store. Oh, that's right, Cabot's. Then, then, they, then they built the, the uh, purity. You know, but Mr. Cabot's was the first. Yeah, yeah. N and then they built a uh, purity store. But people usually went up town and shopped. And the 526 Club, was that in the 30s? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Or was that say. the 40s? <laughs> You know, I, I remember Hill. from the 40s because because I was, the war started, I was nine years old. So the, I call it Whiskey Hill where all the... In the 30s there was no bar down there. I want you to remember what I showed you in my office. If you don't mind, could you leave yeah. it out? Sure. Do you remember I, get I showed you the pictures of all those mm -hmm. Okies? Yep. In 1936, there they were. They, were, they all lived out here. When I was a kid, just to give you an example, when Jerry talks about going to Main Street, we all did. I bought a Cub Scout shirt, and my brother took me, and we walked all the way from where I lived on Midway Avenue down to Port of Irvine's to get the Cub Scout yeah, shirt because they, they weren't out of here. So the Al Sal was just a, a, not a composite, maybe it's a composite of people just, mm -hmm. just being. Maybe, Bruce, by the time you were, uh, you can remember well, even before your teenage years, was there a place to be in the Alice Was there, or? You know, in, in all honesty, I don't remember us as, as kids having a place that we yeah. really congregated. If, if it was congregation, we did, we, first of all, we, we walked everywhere. So we if did. we ended up uh, going anywhere, it was probably somewhere closer to town. So there was really no one single location out here that we kind of come Well, like, in the old days, they used to come to people's houses. And, you know, a lot of times I'd come home from school and my mom would have a whole bunch of people here. And she's in the kitchen cooking. But that, that's the way they met at this house. I, I guess that's the way they did back in Oklahoma, Texas. I don't know. 
Yeah, because I always remember Bill. Even I, as a kid, come home it was always families getting together. Here. I mean, you know. We had a lot Pop, of family Pop, get Pop, together. Yeah. Very popular here. Very we, had, popular. we had them here at this yeah. house. There used to be a door here. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yes, yeah. TF and I, we played right here with those, made those little lead soldiers uh -huh. during my my those years when I remember that. But we had a lot of gatherings, uh, and we had them out further out where I live. Yeah. Uh, we had family gatherings. Yeah, well, but we had the, that vacant lot back there. That's what we did. Yeah. They, they had we had the family. We had tables back there. They used to come. But I, every time I come home from school, Mom and Pop had company. But that's the way people they yeah, love to visit. I think that's probably true. I think there was more gathering at houses mm -hmm. than there were at, at central locations. So oh yeah, they get it at the houses. They didn't get it. At the that's why. That's why we have more houses. So if you were in our position and you're looking for a site in the Alice Alta Mark, mm -hmm. that would it be in some way emblematic of the community here? What would you do? Well, it, it would more likely be a field, a, you know, a spot with a baseball field, a uh, spot where the first house was built out here, where the first neighbor, o o the Okies came together, you know, that is a, is a, a community. Uh, I would, you know, this would certainly be an area where you would want to look for something along those lines, mm -hmm. because these were the first houses, and a lot, unfortunately, a lot of them are gone now. But uh, yeah, I'm certainly this would this would be the area. I I, I this don't two block area or this 56 block area. I would, you know what you're really talking about here, the, the Hebron Heights area, which is what it's called now. It, it, this area between Hebron and Felice Market and Al Sal is really the area that they they first mm -hmm. came to. First, the land was at, at that time cheap, and I think that the city founders thought, well, they're far enough away, we don't have to worry about them, <laughs> you know. And uh, I think. This is really the area where it all started. It was it was referred to as Little Oklahoma, Oklahoma Flats. So the place we're in right now, we're in Little Oklahoma right now. You're right in the middle. Oh of Oklahoma yeah, you Flats. are right in the middle. Right that's the middle. nice, Little Oklahoma. Oklahoma. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah. McDonald's. Yeah. Yeah. They had a cattle ranch there. Who did? Well, McDonald's here. They had a bunch of cattle there. A square. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we could everybody do that. Actually, everybody had cattle. Papa had chicken, had rabbit. Then when the city came in, for hey. We lived off of those rabbits and chickens. And when we came in, the city came in, we had to get rid of all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, the first, thing, the first time I saw a chicken's neck wrung mm -hmm. was right out in the back of this place. Me too. <laughs> just, I couldn't believe it. I always remember my Aunt Cecil. I have to say, okay, we're going out. We're going to and kill you know, the chickens. The sheriff's office, they had the sheriff's office, the corner on the, where that grocery store is, the corner of Madeira and Alistair. That was the sheriff's office to do his jobs with the girl then. And, then when the city come in, my dad wasn't very happy about it. No, yeah, a lot of people weren't. Then they, we had to pay to get the sidewalk, then we had to hook up with the sewer. We had to dig all the sewer those days. But I remember that, that Mama was happy with it because she saw to have to find somebody come and dig our sewer. But the, and then when the city come in, we seen what we had, sidewalks and everything, but we were okay, fine. You know, you know, the old people, they get used to something. They, they, don't, want to, they don't want to change. When, when we had a, an event, and I'm at Al Sal School, I'm in the third grade, and the event was to go see a movie, and typically the schools would set this up, mm -hmm. guess what we would do? We'd go to the Crystal Theater. Mm -hmm. And that was a big event. So everybody went to town. Going to Salinas was the event. It wasn't hanging out on Al Sal Street, nope. and it wasn't hanging out on Market Street. I talked about Whiskey Hill and the 526 Club, and those were more in the 40s. But those were the people I showed you the pictures of in 1936. Uh, but, but there wasn't a place to be. There wasn't a gathering spot. And even 20 years later, in the mid-50s, when there, there, we didn't have a gathering yeah. spot. You know, I, even when I was here a teenager, there was not a, well, the gathering spot was Mel's Drive-In. I mean, yeah, you know, that downtown. Mel's Drive-In was it. Yeah, my downtown. You know, that was but where, how'd you get there if you didn't have a car? It's well, a by the time, it was, and that's exactly how we got there. We walked. You walked a long way to hang out somewhere else? Oh, right, yeah. we there always were, walked. Oh, there's a whole bunch of that. That's why I yeah. think we stayed so well. That no, wasn't the days before cars had, you know, so well. people didn't have 
three and four cars in a family in those days. There were a lot of houses that had zero cars. A whole bunch of them. Yeah, so if we wanted to, even, even as a teenager, I remember I got the first car in the family at 16. And that was when we were out working in strawberry fields. fields. I told him he wanted a car, and I by myself, and I said, you go to work, and, and he worked and bought his own car. Let's go back to what the question was. Where, where you lived out here more years than I did, mm -hmm. Uh, well, if you're trying to identify something, and, and I tried by driving Hebron Street all the way down to Cesar Chavez Park over there, I thought, well, I don't think this will work. That's, if, if you take Hebron Street and you go all the way from outside the market, you'll get down to that park. Right. That's now known as the Cesar Chavez Park, right. Community Park or whatever right. it is. Those are where the shanty towns. That, that's the area where that's stuck. Mm -hmm. That's where the shanty towns I remember. If you if you talk about Al Sal, you're exactly right. Felice Street, Hebron Street, Al, Al Sal, Sal Market. Market. This is it. That was the world. Yeah, well, it yeah. really was. That's yeah. what the world consisted of. Well, you know that Tony, we're trying to get Al Sal back. Now I don't like East Salinas. You know, ever before you go in Chicago, I lived in Rockford, Illinois, for three years. We go to Chicago. Everywhere you go east is the slums, east, east, east. And now we, Tony and I are working trying to get Alice Al back. I like Alice Al. Yeah. I don't like East Selena. So does, yeah, I've heard that from other people. Well, let's, get more of an, let's get the historical tone to say Alice and, and, Al. Oh, but it's the same way. East, east was the slums. Well, Bruce had it right on. We were across the track. When you were across mm -hmm. that railroad, you were out across the tracks. And my biggest shock, I, my, I want you to think about something, Jerry. My biggest shock, if there was one, culture shock was going to town, going to high school. Hmm. When I was out here in the Alice I was protected. We, we played baseball every day. We played kick the can every day. We did the things you, you did. And the big event, now, now we're going to high school. Mm -hmm. And this, now in my case, this is back in 1946 when I started going to high school. But the same thing with, with my brothers and sisters. So the big event was kind of a culture shock to come to town, to come to town and get on the bus and go to school. Because up until that time, the way you went to school was just your two feet. Mm -hmm. And, and I sure Bill with you, and the same thing it was. I remember mom telling me stories. Most of the friends you had were still the friends that you had that were from here. Oh, right you know, you were not accepted. I know Mom's told me about the story. Your friends were from Alisal when you yeah. went to Salinas High, right? Yeah. Your friends were from here. I know. Oh, yeah. We See, had our group. There was a definite segregation. Yeah. Uh, Lee and I were the best of friends. And I, I had six good friends, and I outlived them all. I outlived all my family, too. I guess I'm too mean. No, that's not true I at all. I don't know what else it is. <laughs> but uh, Lee and I, Lee lived on, ter uh, on the a terrace street. I lived here, and we used to walk. To, we, and then we caught the bus. They finally let us. And then when the war come along, they took the bus out. We had to walk to school. Her and I walked everywhere together. I think you walk. You know, walking keeps you strong. She still walks. I enjoy walking. I always will enjoy I'm sure walking. She I have to ask one question. You know, I understand they put. The county put a library out in, in this area in 1940. Did anybody go to that one? Oh, Chavez. No, but before that, Mom, you, where was the library out here before Cesar Chavez's uh, library? Did you ever go to it? It was no, in I 1940. Don't, I don't think so. I, I don't it's always on Main Street. We had the library on Main Street. And did you yeah. go to that but one? When I played it with him, I used to work down to, on the Main Street there. And, and like, because I loved the library. And, uh, I don't remember a library. I don't. All I remember is a bus. Then, then Chavez I mean, came bus, along. They got a mobile, library, mobile library. Yeah. But they didn't call it Chavez before. They yeah. called it, uh, they had a name. What Santa did they call Lucia. it, Bill? There you go. They changed the name. They changed it, it, it the was name. called Santa Lucia. What? Santa Lucia was the name of it before. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Then they changed it. Well, they changed, there's a lot of things they changed. Yeah. Let me ask you, when you played Kick the Can, and I, this is why I'm asking this, when we make these markers, we're thinking of creating little objects in bronze to put in them that is somehow expressive of people's time here. It could be interesting to have a little crumpled up can and have it referred to as a kick the can. Did you ever play kick the can? No. And Did I was you ever play you, kick the can? How, what yes. kind of cans do you kick? 
tin cans. Tin cans. See, like, I thought it, it was it was our family tradition. I, I learned it when I was a kid. You well, know. My dad try to, try to explain it because it's been so many years I can't. Well, what happened was it, it's it's a variation of hide and seek. Okay, because what you did was is is one person was it. They had to stand with their foot over the can was the base. Okay, and you had to protect it because if somebody was hiding and came in and kicked the can, everybody was free that you would capture it, yeah. and they'd run and hide again, you know, yeah. and then you were still it, it, having to protect that can until you basically caught everybody that was hiding. So kick the can was your way of saying, okay, you're all free, and you kick the can, and everybody took off and went to hide. And how Is that when they used was Just this? a little, we just usually basically yeah. aluminum can, or yeah, bad old like steel a small can. Si a small size, like can of soup? Get, can of peas. Can of no, peas. Can, can of soup, can of peas. So this is kind of a largish can. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. that you could be. Like a big Basically, family whatever, serving or a whatever, single serving? Whatever, whatever the can was that you'd had from dinner the night before was yeah. the can that you used. Well, in the old days, we played rope over, over, you know? Yeah. And we, did, we didn't run the streets. We were never allowed to do those things. You know, my dad was very strict with us. We these kids nowadays, they run the streets and well, everything. Where'd you play kick the can? Where'd you play Kick the Can in Red Rover at, Mom? What? Where did you play Kick the Can in Red Rover? In the back lab. Yeah, so we have a huge... There, we had a, a vacant lot back here. Well, you had a big lot in the back. Yeah. yeah. Did other kids play it? Did a lot of kids out here play Kick the oh, Can? Oh, yeah. <laughs> my nephew... I grew up with my nephews and nieces. That's all I ever played with. No. Now, I, they write me letters all the time, you know? Bruce, is that where that term "ollie ollie auction free"? No, that was. Be? Was that a different part uh, of the game? That was more. That was um. Ollie ollie auction free. I get my more, game. It was up. more the the Red Rover or okay. something else. Kick, kick the can was basically you just kick the can. You you know, okay, you're free. And everybody would take a split. You know, we'd run like crazy. So, so at the end of the game, did the can were they really strong cans? So they oh yeah. stayed. They, they didn't end up can steel. They were still cans. They didn't end up all dented at the <laughs> no, end. We they use, were we they were strong for, cans. We grew up on can. Okay. So a dented <laughs> can would not be a kick the can. That wouldn't be authentic. No, it would. You know, you needed a, you needed a good steel can. And were know. there labels on them at that yeah. point? Were there paper they, labels? They would eventually come off because you you kick it and you know one or two times the label is gone. So they they always had they had yeah. Campbell's. And yeah. so they had uh, paper labels at that point mm -hmm. that would come off, so it would be silver by the time with little ridges on it. That's like an old exactly what it looked like. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know, we grew up on cornbread, biscuits, and gravy. I hate all three of them. I hate them. <laughs> I won't even eat them. <laughs> my, my dad so, had to have cornbread every time to at the table. So when I went to the Senior Citizen Bureau, I go to the uh, firehouse, they, and every time they had, I, I give it to somebody. <laughs> I don't like gravy, and I don't like biscuits, and I don't like cornbread. Did you grow up on that bill? I did. You know, my mom wasn't much of a cook. She was busy raising kids. So dad was a cook. Oh, my, dad oh, cook. He could cook. And, and uh, liver was something I didn't care for. We had a lot of liver. You must have been able to buy a lot of liver for not much money because we had a lot of it. Your mother had a pressure cooker. She'd come over and cook with mom. mom her his mother, mom, and my mother. I love ketchup. My mom used to make the best ketchup because my dad had a garden and the boys give it away. She used to have to hide it because I drew drinks with ketchup. I'm still ketchup crazy. Oh, yeah. But uh, I, I, we were so poor, to, but we never dared to say we did like this or that. We just ate it. We ate it. If there was an object that, that yeah. you would think would be emblematic of living in the Alice South from 36 to 39 that we could have embedded in, in bronze on this marker, what what kind of objects might be expressive of that? That's a good question. Well, so, Mom, if you look back on 36 to 39 and you had to name one object, one thing that you would think that comes to mind most during 36 to 39, what's the one thing, you know, meaning, meaning a thing, like this. What's the one thing that you remember? One thing I remember? It has to be a thing. The good times we no, had. No, not, not that a thing. Like, you know, a book, a can, a, a pair of shoes. What, what things do you remember the most from that time? Well, I don't know. Mostly baseball. <laughs> That's about it. I know they do play marbles. a lot of baseball. I used to marbles. Marbles. Yeah, I do remember marbles. Marbles. All the time we treat marbles. We had holes, you know. We'd Take the hose and shoot it to the marbles. We had a lot of fun. That what way. kind of marbles did? What did they look like? Glass. Just, just those. 
Draco, Draco and Marbles. But what was regular? You get, them for, you get them for a dime. You get a whole big bag for a dime. Were they like glass cat's eye marbles? Yeah. 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 And agate. They called them agate. Mm -hmm. If you pay a dime. And steelies. We say for dime, you get a whole bag for them. Yeah. Yeah. Dimes and nickels. Were the, and we used to go to show. Remember the LA? You did? We used to walk all the way to show. Yeah, you did. Every Saturday, we had to go to L.A. That's what we all did. We, yeah. we walked from the outside to town. Yep, we said we'd go to L.A. and see uh, cowboys. Mm -hmm. They had big cowboys to L.A. Then we went to the Crystal. We put the Crystal. And they pay a dime and a nickel. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it. Did you go that was another entertainment we had. What, so, what? Going to a theater, so yeah. This is all before, of course. You know, Mom, right. Mom would well, give us a dime TV. and we'd put it back to save for the show. And we'd run all the way to town to go to see the show. But you guys had radio, though, Mom. Huh? You had the radio, though, right? Well, we had a radio, but Papa had that all the time. <laughs> Listen to Roosevelt. He said, we come in, I'd come in from school, he'd be by the radio, but I liked the shadow and things like that, you know. Oh, yeah. He'd shoot, shoot, you know. And uh, Lamont Cranston, that's, mm -hmm. why, that's how you cut the middle. I got my middle name, Lamont, yeah, that's uh, and your first name. I, I, we I all did. We all used life. to gather around and listen to the radios and listen to those, those I shows. I know after after school, when I was going to Fremont School. But you know these shows they show on television today is kind of ridiculous. <laughs> it really is. Kind of, some of them are kind of nasty. That's why your grandson loves them, though. <laughs> you like the nasty ones? Yeah, 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 aren't you disappointed in him? You like those nasty ones? I don't know what you're talking about, Grandma. <laughs> Did you guys ever go to the Rodeo? I, 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 that's Mom? why I'm glad I Mom? like baseball, because Mom, you do Mom, she <laughs> asked if you went to the Rodeo. Oh, yeah, we used to go to the Rodeo all the time. We had kitty capers play. I was in the kitty capers play. I bet this low range you come first by. <laughs> Did you really? Yeah. Oh, the kitty capers parade. Then we we'd have a ticket. They give us tickets. We go to the rodeo free. Mm -hmm. If you were in a kitty parade, you'd get that exactly yeah. correct. No, we enjoyed it. We enjoyed it those days. Yeah. But the, the, uh, I don't. I, I don't like this new stadium. Fred and I, my husband and I went. I don't like this new stadium. Do you like it, Bill? Uh, I enjoy my mem memories, and I have the memories of the rodeo. I used to. You know, I was a director for 18 years, so Fred I did a lot of it out there before they changed everything. I was going to say something. You you mentioned the Kitty Caper Parade, uh, Jerry. Wasn't it so that it was on Main Street, but it also right down to the Carnival, where the Southern Pacific Railroad is now? So you got the free tickets. Remember the remember the Carnival was at the yeah. end of Main oh, Street. Oh yeah, right at the end of Main Street. Yeah. But, uh, well, you know the Salvation Army. I was in a girl guard. They called like a girl scout. Well, I was a girl guard leader, real fun. But when I was little, I was in Sunbeam, not like to. And the, and the girl, we always had a float. And I wow. see that they still got that. We still got that. Because they put down here at the senior place. And we always had a float. And, and we had a lot. And we took tickets to the, uh, to the carnival. On San Benito Street near Sherwood School. Uh, the first time I went to school, the first time I came out, I went to Sherwood. I was in the third grade. So we built the float, and we built, and we used a typical roller skate. You remember the roller oh, skate? And, and that was our moving apparatus. Yep. So we built the float on San Benito, and pushing it all the way to town to be in the Kitty Caper Parade, one of the darn skates broke. Uh -huh. Just this picture. Now we're talking from Sherman School uh -huh. all the way into town. My brothers and my sisters, and uh, but, but those are the types of things you did. So we didn't have a parade out in the Al Sal. We didn't have a place to go to the Al Sal. We didn't have the Crystal Theater, the Fox Theater, the Elway Theater, nor the Vogue Theater. They were all downtown. Right. And that's why I really, I mean, I, this is what's so astounding about mm -hmm. this, this, this the diagram, is to see the railroad tracks. And I say it's the Southern Pacific. This really was the dividing line. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was Salinas, and there was everybody else from Little Oklahoma. That was the dividing line. That was the dividing line even when I went to high school. Now, I went there in the 60s. And I, one year I had to go to Salinas High because they were building Alice Al High. And we, all of us out here, had to go one year to Salinas High. It was the worst year of my life. 
because first of all, they knew that we were from Alsa, and second of all, they knew we weren't going to be there for very long, and we had to really try hard to have people like this. Very popular. Yeah, I thought I, I thought it was, and then finally when we went to Alsa. It was like a breath of fresh air for us to get there, and we had Alsa High because you know, here was everybody we'd grown up with. So it was it was that way. That that dividing line was up until yeah, he was probably the early seventies. So, but it was it was that 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 imaginary line existed for a long time. I'm very proud of him. Got on, on a roll and everything. Oh, Mom, I'm starting to blush. Life so was so it. life was so simple. Mm -hmm. I did, you mentioned your time frame, which was the '60s, mm -hmm. and when I started high school, I'm in the late '40s, and I played football. I played baseball. So guess what we did when we got all through? We hitchhiked home, and guess how we did it? We stood right there in the corner of Monterey and Garden Grissom mm -hmm. Motor Company. Right. And I hitchhiked home, and I look inside. This is a motor company, and they had Cadillacs and Oldsmobiles, if you remember. Mm -hmm. I do. And I would sit the there, and I would look and say, gee, I wonder, I guess I would say, I wonder who would buy those. And <laughs> how would you ever do something like that? You're getting you remember the underpass that you built? Yes, I do. I love that underpass. Remember the board, the underpass, mm -hmm. and the old school? It's a big deal when they built that underpass. I really love that. You know, they used to work under that, but they said it, they closed it because there were too many rapes down there. And I thought that was so sweet of the kids, you know, to go right under you. But the, everything that was good here, they made it, they, they, they found it bad. See, that's, and the only thing I got disappointed with them. But that's interesting how she claimed, you know, looks back on those days of the 30s and 40s Pardon? that everything was good, even though <laughs> they really didn't have anything, you know, they, mm -hmm. but they didn't know that. Uh, that was the whole point is they, you know, they had the family the foundation and everything was provided, everybody stayed together. and. That was good for them. Jerry, you mentioned your sisters working in the letter sheds. Do you, you remember talking about working in the letter sheds? Oh, yeah, 36, okay, now, let, let, Yeah, and let, me, let me fast forward something. Or let's go back to something. I know it was true of my mother. She packed, I mean, she trimmed lettuce. Dad put labels on the crates at the end at Bruce Shirt's company. And during, but during the wintertime, Mom would sit home and draw unemployment. I don't know whether you were ever in that world when the letter sheds were open and the season never changes. Letter starts in late April or May, and it runs as it used to run until, until October, and, and then we found these other areas. But do you remember that time remember drawing unemployment? My, my nephew stayed with that tent. Mm -hmm. He was scared. They threw marbles and rocks and everything. I went to. Roy, remember, I don't know if Mom knows it, but my brother in law went to prison for three years or that. Yeah, but well, Mom, I'm talking about the lettuce sheds. I know, but I'm just saying. Worked that about strike! That strike squawked a lot of it. It, it did that. The, the, the strike raised uh, havoc with a whole bunch of people. It was a defining time. If you go to Steinbeck Center, you'll see that. Well, I think it's where Indubious Battle, a lot of the, the, the story from Steinbeck's yeah, Indubious Battle yeah. comes from. You know, from that whole strike era and, the, and that whole produce thing. So. Let's go back to what you're trying to find and identifying. You can you can hear it's difficult to come. Yeah, I completely it's, hear. It's, yeah, it's difficult to define an area that we all grew up in that we identified with. We just we all went to town to do something and then we walked home. Okay, but we still have to put a marker here. So I'm going to bring us back again okay. to the same place. So I, I hear that, and maybe we can walk down to the area by Felice where the baseball diamond was, because that's a possibility of a place to mark. But I want to get back, because you've mentioned some streets, but since I don't know them, you may have answered this question. Were there shanty towns? Were, was there a Hooverville in the Alice House, and where was it? Well, I think Bill described the area pretty well yeah. as to where it was. It was I can drive in, in the yeah. Hebron down to where yeah. what we used to refer to as Car Lake yeah. at one time. Yeah. That's exactly yeah. Can you tell yeah. me, that, because I'm not familiar with this well, area. But I, I'm going to drive you there. Yeah. It's a street that's right out. Here's what's going to happen. Okay. You're not going to walk there, but if you wanted to, would walk down to this corner like you and I did last week. Yeah. And she said, hey, Bill, this is Hebron Street. And it runs all the way, the way down. All, all the way, the way down. to Market Street. This is, then they got, this is not there, but they got South Hebron. Well, this was a newer section over yeah. here. Yeah. But that yeah, that section being down. down to where the shanty town mm -hmm. was. Okay, so Mrs. Ramsey, you're one of the only people here who saw that. So can you, so the, the shanty towns, I know that there were tents, 
But I understand that those were for people that were temporary and they didn't build them, so that wasn't a shanty town. Can you tell me what those looked like in the Allen South? She thinks of them as courts. If you refer to them as courts, okay. that's... Tell her what the courts Tell her what like. the courts look like, the houses that were in the courts. Tell her what those oh, were. Oh, oh, they were just, just like little cabbage building. Mm -hmm. One bedroom and that's it. But, it, but they, two bedrooms. And they just, just built like cabins, that was all. What were they built of? What? What were they built of? Wood. Wood. Okay. Everything but was like wood. siding, like the side yeah. of your house here? Yeah, just like ours. Everything was built of wood out here, mm -hmm. and, and I don't think I think there's a few stucco out here. Very few there are a few ours was one of them. So it's you have a narrow collaborative. Yeah, I do. When they came out here, these people come out here. They were poor. They were coming for a better life. Then when they started working in the sheds, they started getting their money. Well, they started building these houses. Well, a lot of these contractors, but a lot of these people built their own house. My my brother-in-law built this one. Cross street that man built. But a lot of the contractors built most of everything. Okay, so I understand the way the houses were built, but I don't they, think they, that's they, what they, I'm they, talking about. Right there. No, she's talking about the houses in the courts, Mom. They were just cabins, what we call cabins. So it sounds to me as though they were you never shared like like in the Allen's. Yes, they were. Well, so yeah. help me here. Oh, oh, yes. so like okay, her her, her interpretation of your shanty town is what she remembers as courts. But okay. she remembers them having the same kind of siding as this. This is a very fine house. Well, but, 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 this, but, but Mom, I mean, let me just finish one thing here. This, this outside, which she's talking about, was not the original of what this house looked like. This has been added over the years. This, as a kid, I remember this was just straight flat. But we have, I'm sure the pictures we got, you'll see that it, these are just flat houses on the front. There was no siding and the whole bit that was put in. The shanty towns were made of... Uh, Oh, in, Ply, in, plywood, in, plywood in, pieces of metal, yeah. anything. This is how this, this, how this court was built. They had a great big house right there. Then around here they had this little cabins. One right here, one right here, one right here, one right here. Then one right here, that was all it was. Then they had, out, out here, they had another big house. And, and then they had to, and they tore it down. And then they had the little cabins right here. So that was pre-built by one builder. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And a shanty had something had a house I imagined behind. that people cobbled together with what they could find. Well, what I remember about the, and this, this is where you, you may get a clearer picture, what I remember about the courts that were over here, these houses were improved from what they first looked like. Because I remember as a kid, my, my earliest memories of these houses over here was they, that's pretty much the description you have in mind. They were plywood, um, the, the roofs were, you know, kind of just thrown on roofs. That, and then as the person bought the courts, they started upgrading the cabinets. Well, they call it Chinglewood. Chinglewood, you know, right by hand. It went on top of another. They called it Chinglewood those days. And then Bill's right, as, as, yeah. as you go down to Hebron, to the area that was over there, those houses were much rougher than, than these were. Yeah, but you know, you know these ha they had a lot of these nice houses. Well, like that, we were just a, they had a house to these people come along and give us money and they tore it down and built business here. These people were so desperate for money, they take it and then, then these business would come in here. These business. My dad was saying, they're robbing us, they're robbing us. They offered them anything they offered them. They came here in 36 when the strike was going. And they they just robbed these people. Because, and then they started building restaurants and doors and this and that. And that land over there where McDonald's is, this guy owned the cow, they, they just gave him anything they could give him because he was so desperate for money. And they started building and building and building. Everything took place in a decade. The, 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 the lettuce industry that, that I know started in the 20s. We had, that's not necessarily in this order, but we had Filipino, Japanese, Chinese, but, but particularly Japanese and, and uh, the Filipinos. The Okies came out here in 1930, and, and Jerry, you say something that I have to, I have a story about my family and they've read it. We were not poor until the Depression hit, then everybody got poor in that area. The farming right. went to a heck in a handbasket. So it was in the 1930s that we all began to come to California for a better life. Up until then, uh, we had a pretty fruitful life.
people went to school, they grew up, they yeah, had cattle, they had horses. The country people were smart those days. They didn't buy everything they sell. They lived just exactly what they were supposed to live on. Mm -hmm. And nowadays, these young people, they're so, they're so much in trouble because they buy, 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 buy. They don't think of, well, in the old days, people thought way ahead, you know. The young people of today does not think way, way ahead. And, and that's why we have so much trouble. But what he's saying, Mom, is during when you guys came out here in the 30s, everybody was pretty much in the same boat. That's right. That's exactly right. We came, they came out here for a better life to California. Because mm -hmm. there was nothing. They were losing their farm back there. They were losing. There was nothing but dust storms and everything. I've heard Pop talk a many, many times. I'm so glad I got out of Texas. So glad I got out of Texas. Well, we had the drought. We had a better growth. life here. Yeah. We did. When you put the life. time frame together, the most of us, our families came in 1930. Yeah. In 1936, we had the strike. In 1941, we had a war. The war changed everything. Things blossomed out here for, among other reasons, the big airport was built. The right. airbase was built. So things began to change. So you're talking about a decade. I, I, I remember moving to Al Salah in 1940 before the Second World War began. And we lived in this lovely new home. Daddy bought it for $3,200, a different part of Al Sal, a little further out, a little nicer than this area because this area was the Oklahoma. These were the folks when you speak of the 30s and the 36s, it was right here. Right. How, however it was in those shanty towns, shanty town was over on Market Street. The way you, know, the way you describe it, they, there's no other way to describe it. It was built of whatever you could find. Like anything, you had to build. A frame. Uh, the only good thing that of the day is medicine. It's gone a long way to heal us. That is the best thing that ever happened right today. Because those days, the people that they were dying off, because they had the county hospital. And a lot of people went there. And my mother died out there because there was nothing we, we could do. But they had nothing but it turned there. But the, up to date, the medicine has gone a long way. I have to say that. Let's go back. Very good thing. Very good thing. Go back to something identifying. Do you have as much trouble as I have coming up with a locate? A location? A -lo yes. Yeah. Uh, I, there, I, I, I could not name you one specific spot, and I'm sure Mom and I know Bill couldn't, that there was one specific spot out here. I mean, her fondest memory is the baseball field. I mean, because she loved baseball, she loved to play. Uh, mine may be different. Bill's may be different. Totally different. And I, I bet if you got... If you, uh, that school on the back room has got a school in there. Sit down. I bet if you got... It, it, how many survivors would still be from that era, they probably would name you 20 different locations. But she would agree basically on the little area. Uh, yeah. The street. Well, you'd say that your world, you. Mom, yeah. when you first came out here, it was between Felice Street, Hebron Street, 